treat you with a Sue Brulee Ogallala Minikanju Yinkitanai Papa Black Fate Cuthead to Cut All Sanarchs and Santee and Arapaho. April 29th, 1869, ratified February 16th, 1869. Articles of a treaty made and concluded by and between Lieutenant General William T. Sherman, General William S. Harney, General Alfred H. Terry, General C. C. Auger, J. B. Henderson, Nathaniel G. Taylor, John B. Sanborn, and Samuel F. Tappan, duly appointed commissioners on the part of the U.S. and the different bands of the Sioux Nation of Indians by their chiefs and headmen, whose names are here to subscribe, they being duly authorized to act in the premises. Article 1. From this day forward, all war between the parties to this agreement shall forever cease. The government of the U.S. desires peace, and its honor is hereby pledged to keep it. The Indians desire peace, and they now pledge their honor to maintain it. If bad men among the whites, or among other people subject to the authority of the U.S., shall commit any wrong upon the person or property of Indians, the U.S. will, upon proof made to the agent and forwarded to the Commissioner of Indian Affairs at Washington City, proceed at once to cause the offender to be arrested and punished according to the laws of the U.S., and also reimburse the injured person for the law sustained. If bad men among Indians shall commit a wrong or depredation upon the person or property of any one white, black, or Indian, subject to the authority of the U.S. and at peace therewith, the Indians here in name solemnly agree that they will, upon proof made to the agent and noticed by him, and deliver up the wrongdoer to the U.S. to be tried and punished according to its laws, and in case they willfully refuse so to do, the person injured shall be reimbursed for his loss from the annuities or other monies due or to become due to them under this or other treaties made with the U.S. and the President on advising with the Commissioner of Indian Affairs shall prescribe such rules and regulations for ascertaining damages under the provisions of this treaty as in his judgment may be proper. But no one sustaining loss while violating the provisions of this treaty or the laws of the U.S. shall be reimbursed therefore. Article 2. The U.S. agrees that the following district of country to wit, viz. commencing on the east bank of the Missouri River, where the 46th parallel of north latitude crosses the same, since long low water mark down said east bank to a point opposite where the northern line of the state of Nebraska strikes the river, thence west across said river, and along the northern line of Nebraska to the 104th degree of longitude west from Greenwich, thence north on said meridian to a point where the 46th parallel of north latitude intercepts the same, Thence due east along said parallel to the place of beginning, and in addition thereto all existing reservations on the east bank of said river shall be, and the same is set apart for this absolute and undisturbed use and occupation of the Indians here named, and for such other friendly tribes or individuals as from time to time they may be willing, with the consent of the U.S., to admit amongst them. And the U.S. now solemnly agrees that no person except those herein designated and authorized so to do, and except such officers, agents, and employees of the government, as may be authorized to enter upon Indian reservations in discharge of duties enjoined by law, shall ever be permitted to pass over, settle upon, or reside in the territory described in this article, or in such territory as may be added to this reservation for the use of said Indians, and henceforth they will and do hereby relinquish all claims or right in and to any portion of the U.S. or territories, except as such as is embraced within the limits aforesaid and except as here and after provided. Article 3. If it should appear from actual survey or other satisfactory examination of such tract of land that it contains less than 160 acre of tillable land for each person who, at the time, may be authorized to reside on it under the provisions of this treaty and a very considerable number of such persons, shall be disposed to commence cultivating the soil as farmers the U.S. agrees to set apart for the use of said Indians as here and provided such additional quantity of arable land adjoining to said reservation or as near to the same as it can be obtained as may be required to provide the necessary amount. Article 4. The U.S. agrees at its own proper expense to construct at some place on the Missouri River near the center of said reservation where timber and water may be convenient the following buildings to it. A warehouse, a storeroom for the use of the agent in storing goods belonging to the Indians to cost not less than $2,500, an agency building for the residence of the agent to cost not exceeding $3,000, a residence for the physician to cost not more than $3,000, and five other buildings for a carpenter, farmer, blacksmith, miller, and engineer, each to cost not exceeding $2,000. Also, a schoolhouse or mission building so soon as a sufficient number of children can be induced by the agent to attend school, which shall not cost exceeding $5,000. The U.S. agree further to cause to be erected on said reservation near the other buildings here and authorized a good steam circular sawmill with a grist mill and, and a shingle machine attached to the same to cost not exceeding $8,000. Article 5. The U.S. agree that the agent for said Indian shall in the future make his home at the agency building that he shall reside among them and keep an office open at all times for the purpose of prompt and diligent inquiry into such matters of complaint by and against Indians as may be presented for investigation under the provisions of their treaty 
stipulations as also for the faithful discharge of other duties enjoined on him by law. In all cases of depredation on person or property, he shall cause evidence to be taken in writing and forwarded together with his findings to the Commissioner of Indian Affairs, whose decision subject to the provision of the Secretary of Interior shall be binding on the parties to this treaty. Article 6. If any individual belonging to said tribe of Indians or legally incorporated with them being the head of a family shall desire to commence farming, he shall have the privilege to select in the presence and with the assistance of the agent then in charge a tract of land within said reservation not exceeding 320 acres in extent which tract when so selected certified and recorded in the land book as herein directed shall cease to be held in common but the same may be occupied and held in the exclusive possession of the person selecting it and of his family so long as he or they may continue to cultivate it any person over 18 years of age not being the head of a family may in like manner select and cause to be certified to him or her for purposes of cultivation a quantity of land not exceeding 80 acres in extent and thereupon be entitled to the exclusive possession of the same as above directed for each tract of land so selected a certificate containing a description thereof and the name of the person selecting it with a certificate endorsed thereon that the same has been recorded shall be delivered to the party entitled to it by the agent after the same shall have been recorded by him in a book to be kept in his office subject to inspection which said book shall be known as the sioux land book the president may at any time under a survey of the reservation and when so surveyed congress shall provide for protecting the rights of settlers and their improvements and may fix the character of the title held by each the u s may pass such laws on the subject of alienation and descent of property between indians and their descendants as may be thought proper and it is further stipulated that any male Indians over 18 years of age of any band or tribe that is or shall hereafter become a party to this treaty who is now or who shall there hereafter become a resident or occupant of any reservation or territory not included in the tract of country designated and described in this treaty for the permanent home of the Indians which is not mineral land nor reserved by the U.S. for special purposes other than Indian occupation and who shall have made improvements thereon of the value of two hundred dollars or more and continuously occupied the same as a homestead for the term of three years shall be entitled to receive from the u.s a patent for one hundred and sixty acres of land including his said improvements the same to be in the form of the legal subdivisions of the surveys of the public lands upon application writing sustained by the proof of two disinterested witnesses made to the register of the local land office when the land sought to be entered is within a land district and when the tract sought to be entered in is not in any land district then upon said application and proof being made to the commissioner of the general land office and the right of such indian or indians to enter such tract or tracts of land shall accrue and be perfect from the date of his first improvements thereon and shall continue as long as he continues his residence and improvements and no longer and any indian or indians receiving a patent for land under the foregoing provision shall thereby and from thenceforth become and be a citizen of the u s and be entitled to all the privileges and immunities of such citizens as shall at the same time retain all his rights to benefit occurring to indians under this treaty article seven in order to ensure the civilization of the indians entering into this treaty the necessity of education is admitted especially of such of them as are maybe settled on said agricultural reservations and they therefore pledge themselves to compel their children male and female between the ages of six and sixteen years to attend school and it is hereby made the duty of the agent for said indians to see that this stipulation is strictly complied with and the u s agree that for every thirty children between said ages who can be induced or compelled to attend school a house shall be provided and a teacher competent to teach the elementary branches of an english education shall be furnished who will reside among said indians and faithfully discharge his or her duties as a teacher the provisions of this article to continue for not less than twenty years article eight when the head of a family or a lodge shall have selected lands and received a certificate as above directed and the agent shall be satisfied that he intends in good faith to commence cultivating the soil for a living he shall be entitled to receive seeds and agricultural implements for the first year not exceeding a value of one hundred dollars and for each succeeding year he shall continue to farm for a period of three years more he shall be entitled to receive seeds and implements as aforesaid not exceeding a value of twenty five dollars and it is further stipulated that such persons as commence farming shall receive instruction from the farmer here and provided for and whenever more than 100 persons shall enter upon the cultivation of the soil a second blacksmith shall be provided with such iron steel and other material as may be needed article 9 at any time after 10 years from the making of this treaty the u.s shall have the privilege of withdrawing the physician 
farmer, blacksmith, carpenter, engineer, miller, here and provided for, but in case of such withdrawal, an additional sum thereafter of $10,000 per annum shall be devoted to the education of said Indians, and the Commissioner of Indian Affairs shall, upon careful inquiry into their condition, make such rules and regulations for the expenditure of said sum as will best promote the educational and moral improvements of said tribe. Article 10. In lieu of all sums of money or other annuities provided to be paid to the Indians here named, under any treaty or treaties heretofore made, the U.S. agrees to deliver at the agency house on the reservation here named, on or before the first day of August of each year for 30 years, the following articles to wit. For each male person over 14 years of age, a suit of good substantial woolen clothing consisting of coat, pantaloon, flannel shirt, hat, and a pair of homemade socks. For each female over 12 years of age, a flannel skirt or the goods necessary to make it, a pair of woolen hose, 12 yards of calico, and 12 yards of cotton domestics. For the boys and girls under the ages named, such flannel and cotton goods as may be needed to make each a suit as a forset together with a pair of woolen hose for each. And in order that the Commission of Indian Affairs may be able to estimate properly for the articles here named, it shall be the duty of the agent each year to forward to him a full and exact census of the Indians on which the estimate from year to year can be based. And in addition to the clothing here named, the sum of ten dollars for each person entitled to the beneficial effects of this treaty shall be annually appropriated for a period of thirty years while such persons roam and hunt and twenty dollars for each person who engages in farming to be used by the secretary of the interior for the purchase of such articles as from time to time the condition and necessities of the indians may indicate to be proper and if within the thirty years at any time it shall appear that the amount of money needed for clothing under this article can be appropriated to better uses for indians named here in congress may by law change the appropriation to other purposes but in no event shall the amount of this appropriation be withdrawn or discontinued for the period named and the president shall annually detail an officer of the army to be present and attest the delivery of all the goods here named to indians and he shall inspect and report on the quantity and quality of the goods and the manner of their delivery and it is hereby expressly stipulated that each indian over the age of four years who shall have removed it to and settled permanently upon said reservation and complied with the stipulations of this treaty shall be entitled to receive from the u s for the period of four years after he shall have settled upon said reservation one pound of meat and one pound of flour per day provided the indians cannot furnish their own subsistence at an earlier date and it is further stipulated that the u s will furnish and deliver to each lodge of indians or family of persons legally incorporated with them who shall remove to the reservation here and described and commence farming one good American cow, one good well-broken pair of American oxen within 60 days after such lodge or poor family shall so settle upon said reservation. Article 11. In consideration of the advantages and benefits conferred by this treaty and the many pledges of friendship by the U.S., the tribes who are parties to this agreement hereby stipulate that they will relinquish all right to occupy permanently. The territory outside the reservation is herein defined, but yet reserve the right to hunt on any lands north of North Platte and on the Republican Fork of the Smoky Hill River, so long as the buffalo may range thereon in such numbers as to justify the chase. And they, the said Indians, further expressly agree, first, that they will withdraw all opposition to the construction of the railroads now being built on the plains, second, that they will permit the peaceful construction of any railroad not passing over the reservation as herein defined. Third, that they will not attack any person at home or traveling, nor molest or disturb any wagon trains, coaches, mules, or cattle belonging to the people of the U.S. or to persons friendly there. Fourth, they will never capture or carry off from settlements white women or children. Fifth, they will never kill or scalp white men, nor attempt to do them harm. Sixth, they withdraw all pretense of opposition to the construction of the railroad now being built along the Platte River and westward to the Pacific Ocean, and they will not in future object to the construction of railroads, wagon roads, mail stations, or other works of utility or necessity which may be ordered or permitted by the laws of the U.S. But should such roads or other works be constructed on the lands of the reservation, the government will pay the tribe whatever amount of damage may be assessed by three disinterested commissioners to be appointed by the president for that purpose, one of said commissioners to be a chief or headmen of the tribe. Seventh, they agree to withdraw all opposition to the military posts or roads now established south of the North Platte River, or that may be established not in violation of treaties heretofore made or hereafter to be made with any of the Indian tribes. Article 12. No treaty for the cession of any portion or part of the reservation herein described, which may be held in common, shall be of any validity or force as against the said Indians, unless executed and signed by at least three-fourths of all the adult male Indians occupying or interested in the same, and no cession by the tribe shall be understood 
episode are construed in such manner as to deprive, without his consent, any individual member of the tribe of his rights to any tract of land selected by him as provided in Article 6 of this treaty. Article 13. The U.S. hereby agrees to furnish annually to the Indians the physician, teachers, carpenter, miller, engineer, farmer, and blacksmith as herein contemplated, and that such appropriation shall be made from time to time on the estimates of the Secretary of Interior, as well as will be sufficient to employ such persons. Article 14. It is agreed that the sum of $500 annually for three years from date shall be expended in presence to the ten persons of said tribe who, in the judgment of the agent, may grow the most valuable crops for the respective year. Article 15. Indians herein named agree that when the agency house or other buildings shall be constructed on the reservation named, they will regard said reservation their permanent home, and they will make no permanent settlement elsewhere, but they shall have the right, subject to the conditions and modifications of this treaty, to hunt as stipulated in Article 11 hereof. Article 16. The U.S. hereby agrees and stipulates that the country north of the Platte River and east of the summits of the Bighorn Mountains shall be held and considered to be unceded territory, and also stipulate and agree that no white person or person shall be permitted to settle upon or occupy any portion of the same, or without the consent of Indians first had and obtained to pass through the same, and it is further agreed by the U.S. that within 90 days after the conclusion of peace with all the bands of the Sioux Nation, the military posts now established, and the territory in this article named shall be abandoned and that the road leading to them and by them to the settlements in the territory of Montana shall be closed. Article 17. It is hereby expressly understood and agreed by and between the respective parties to this treaty that the execution of this treaty and its ratification by the U.S. Senate shall have the effect and shall be construed as abrogating and annulling all treaties and agreements heretofore entered into between the respective parties hereto, so far as such treaties and agreements obligate the U.S. to furnish and provide money, clothing, or other articles of property to such Indians and bands of Indians as become parties to this treaty, but no further. And testimony of all which we, the said commissioners, and we, the chiefs and headmen of the Brule Band of the Sioux Nation, have here unto set our hands and seals at Fort Laramie, Dakota Territory, this 29th day of April in the year 1868. N.G. Taylor, W.T. Sherman, Lieutenant General William S. Harney, Brevet Major General, U.S. Army, John B. Sanborn, S.F. Tappan, C.C. Auger, Brevet Major General, Alfred H. Terry, Brevet Major General, U.S. Army. Attest A. S. H. White, Secretary. Executed on the part of the Brule Band of Sioux by the chiefs and headmen whose names are here to annex, they being thereunto duly authorized, at Fort Laramie, Dakota Territory, in the 29th day of April in the year A.D. 1868. Mazapankaska, his ex mark Iron Shell, Wapitasha, his ex mark Red Leaf, Hasapa, his ex mark Blackhorn, Zintakalataska, his ex mark Spotted Tail. Zintiska, his ex mark white tail. Niwatani Hoska, his ex mark tall mandas. Shichichatka, his ex mark bad left hand. Noma Nopa, his ex mark two and two. Tatankaska, his ex mark white bull. Kamrish Washta, his ex mark pretty coon. Haka Ka Shikta, his ex mark bad elk. Wakaza Ishta, his ex mark eye lands. Matohaka Te, his ex mark bear that looks behind. Bella Tonka Tonka, his ex mark, big partisan. Matoha Honka, his ex mark, swift bear. To Weisne, his ex mark, cold place. Ishtashka, his ex mark, white eyes. Matulaza, his ex mark, fast bear. Hakanaji, his ex mark, standing elk. Kentitikia, his ex mark, the brave heart. Shankashatan, his ex mark, dayhawk. Tatanka Wakan, his ex mark, sacred bull. Mapia Shatan, his ex mark, hawk cloud. Mashao, his ex mark, stands and comes. Shankatanka, his ex mark, big dog. Attest Ashton S. H. White, Secretary of Commission, George B. Withs, Phonographer to Commission, George H. Holtzman, John D. Howlano, James O'Connor, Chase E. Guerin, Interpreter, Leon F. Pilardi, Interpreter, Nicholas Janus, Interpreter. Executed on the part of the Oglala Band of Sioux by the chiefs and headmen whose names are here to subscribe, they being thereunto duly authorized at Fort Laramie the 12th day of May in the year A.D. 1868. Tashanka Kwokba, his ex mark, man afraid of his horses. Shatanska, his ex mark, white hawk. Shatansapa, his ex mark, black hawk. Gimantaka, sapa, his ex mark, black tiger. Awashita, his ex mark, bad wound. Pukai, his ex mark, grass. Wananrechika, his ex mark, ghost heart. Kamre, his ex mark, Conri, his ex mark, crow. Ohitaka, his ex mark, the brave. Tatanka Yataka, his ex mark, sitting bull. Shanka o Wahamanye, his ex mark, whirlwind dog. Hahaka ta miech, his ex mark, or elk. 
Wambule Wakan, his ex mark, Medicine Eagle, Changa Maha to Hanska, his ex mark, High Wolf, Wasechen to Shanka, his ex mark, American Horse, Maha Maha Magnir, his ex mark, Man that Walks Under the Ground, Matutau Pa, his ex mark, Four Bears, Matu Wishta, his ex mark, One That Kills a Bear, Okatitoka Wichakta, his ex mark, One That Kills in a Hard Place, Tatanka Tamich, his ex mark, the poor bull. Ohunzi Gananskin, his ex mark, mad shade. Shatomini Naomini, his ex mark, rolling hawk. Matochanka, his ex mark, bears back. Chitomwiko, his ex mark, wahokashaha, his ex mark, one that has the lance. Shangamani Tonkase, his ex mark, big wolf foot. Etonka, his ex mark, big mouth. Maypachita, his ex mark, bad hand. Wakayansha, his ex mark, red thunder. Wakasa, his ex mark, one that cuts off. Chemnamquia, his ex mark, one that presents a pipe. Wakayanpata, his ex mark, fire thunder. Mantonangpase, his ex mark, bear with yellow ears. Karitika, his ex mark, the little crow. Heapato, his ex mark, the blue war club. Shankato, his ex mark, the blue horse. Wambala Okonko, his ex mark, quick eagle. Tatanka Sapa, his ex mark, black bull. Motahashina, his ex mark, the bear hide. A test, S.E. Ward, J.C. O'Connor, H.M. Matthews, Joseph Bissonnette, interpreter. J.M. Sherwood, Nicholas Janus, interpreter. W.C. Slicer, Lefroy Jot, interpreter. Sam Dion, Antoine Janus, interpreter. Executed on the part of the Minneconjan band of Sioux by the chiefs and headmen, whose names are hereto subscribed, they being thereto and to duly authorized at Fort Laramie, Dakota Territory, May 26, 1868. Thirteen names. Hawangacha, his ex mark, one horn. Oponata'i man, his ex mark, the elk that bellows walking. At Fort Laramie, Dakota Territory, May 25th, 1868, two names. Heola Re his ex mark, young white bull. Wachachakan Kokipa, his ex mark, one that is afraid of shield. Ehani Shakta, his ex mark, the old owl. Makpieto, Opongeleska, his ex mark, spotted owl. Tatanka Hongishne, his ex mark, slow bull. Shankane Shasha Tape, his ex mark, the dog chief. Matota Tatanka, his ex mark, bull bear. Wombele Tanka, his ex mark, the big eagle. Mato Eshnela, his ex mark, the lone bear. Matoki Suya, his ex mark, the one who remembers the bear. Mato Ohetoke, his ex mark, the brave bear. Echemahe, his ex mark, the runner. Tikiya, his ex mark, the hard. Himaza, his ex mark, iron horn. Attest, J.C. O'Connor, William H. Brown, Nicholas Janus, interpreter. Antoine Janus, interpreter. Executed on the part of the Yangtonai band of suit by the chiefs and headmen whose names are hereto subscribed, they being therein too duly authorized. Matunan Pa, his ex mark, two bears. Matau Hana Skinya, his ex mark, mad bear. Heo Puza, his ex mark, lousy. Okechita Shake Dan, his ex mark, little soldier. Mato Etan Chan, his ex mark, chief bear. Kubi Hewin, his ex mark, rotten stomach. Skunka Waiko, his ex mark, fool dog. Ishtisape, his ex mark, black eye. Itinchan, his ex mark, the chief. Ayawikiwa, his ex mark, the one who tells the truth. Akechita, his ex mark, the soldier. Tishinagi, his ex mark, yellow robe. Na Petanka, his ex mark, big hand. Chanti Wikdo, his ex mark, full heart. Hokin Sapa, his ex mark, black catfish. Matoaken, his ex mark, medicine bear. Shanka Kencha, his ex mark, red horse. Wan Road, his ex mark, the eagle. Ken Pisapa, his ex mark, black tomahawk. Warhilere, his ex mark, yellow eagle. Chatanchika, his ex mark, small hawk or long fair. Shiger Mani Tuhaska, his ex mark, tall wolf. Mato Utaka, his ex mark, sitting bear. Hihaka Ginaskin, his ex mark, mad elk. Arapaho, his little chief, his ex mark, tall bear, his ex mark, top man, his ex mark, neva, his ex mark, the wind bear, his ex mark, thorough wind, his ex mark, the fox, his ex mark, the dog, big mouth, his ex mark, spotted wolf, his ex mark, sorrel horse, his ex mark, black coal, his ex mark, big wolf, his ex mark, knock knee, his ex mark, black crow, his ex mark, the lone old man, his ex mark, paul, his ex mark, black bull, his ex mark, big track, his ex mark, the foot, his ex mark, black white, his ex mark, yellow hair, his ex 
mark a little shield, his X mark a black bear, his X mark a wolf moccasin, his X mark big robe, his X mark wolf chief, his X mark witnesses Robert P. McKibben, Captain 4th Infantry, Brevet Lieutenant Colonel, U.S. Army Commanding Fort Laramie, William H. Powell, Brevet Major, Captain 4th Infantry, Henry W. Patterson, Captain 4th Infantry, Theodore E. True, 2nd Lieutenant, 4th Infantry, W.G. Bullock, Charles E. Guern, Special Indian Interpreter for the Peace Commission.